What up guys, Carolina Jackpot time coming at you. It is Thursday evening and it's time for the week 11 picks against the spread. College football um, through 10 weeks of action so far, Carolina Jackpot is one game under 500 with a couple of pushes. So as we hit the home stretch of the 2020 season, it's time to start cashing some tickets, people. Let's see what we can do. We've got 23 games on the slate for this weekend, and hopefully none of these get canceled. I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, it seemed like everything that was canceled was handled at the beginning of the week. I haven't seen anything pop up the last couple of days. So hopefully we're done with that, and we're ready to move forward, and all of these games will be played. Fingers crossed. All right, let's jump right into it. The Iowa Hawkeyes on the road at Minnesota. This is a Friday night game. Um, Minnesota is catching three and a half at home. Uh, Minnesota defense uh, looks atrocious so far this year. Uh, they can score some points. Um, Iowa, uh, I, I, kind of a, a mixed bag here with them so far. They're sitting at one and two. They blew out Michigan State. Actually, it was 49-7, right? But they are sitting here with losses to Purdue and uh, Northwestern. Uh, in this spot, uh, I like the primetime home underdog. Give me a Minnesota and the Golden Gophers to cover uh, the three and a half points. Uh, East Carolina on the road at number seven, Cincinnati. Cincinnati laying 27 in the hook in uh, Nippert Stadium. Now, Cincinnati is coming in here ranked number seven, six and zero. Oh. Um, you know, they failed to cover in two of their first three ball games this year, but the last three games, they've covered the spread. And would you believe it if I told you that SMU, Memphis, and Houston, what do you think about when you think of those th three teams? You think offense, right? Scored a combined 33 points against Cincinnati the past three weeks. That's all I need to know. Uh, East Carolina um, coming off a loss at home to Tulane. And they played pretty well a couple weeks ago on Friday night on the road uh, at Tulsa. Many people thought they got robbed in that game. Um, just I think they are uh, just overmatched here. And uh, Cincinnati is a way better team. Uh, than uh, the Tulsa team that they uh, almost knocked off. So let me go on ahead and take the Cincinnati Bearcats to cover here. I see no reason why they shouldn't cover that 27.5 point spread, uh, especially at home. Um, style points, people, style points. You know, they, they've got to get them. Um, you know, 6-0, oh, this team has the most, uh, most uh, realistic shot in my eyes from what I'm seeing to uh, make the college football playoff if any of these non-Power 5 teams do. Um, they probably won't. Probably still get left out in the cold. Uh, we finish undefeated, but um, they're going to make a push for it. Vanderbilt on the road at Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky is laying 17 points at home. Kentucky, can Kentucky even score 17 points? And I'm not I'm not being funny. I mean, their, their offense has looked really bad. Uh, the last few times out, you know, they uh, they blasted uh, Tennessee a few weeks ago. I mean, what, what was that score? It was like 34 to 7 or something like that. I mean, two of those were defensive touchdowns. You know, scored uh, three points against Georgia. Uh, last time out, I've had an off week to prepare. Vanderbilt ha has looked better uh, offensively against uh, Ole Miss. They were able to put some points on the board. And uh, last week, um, they came from behind, and uh, quarterback, a true freshman, Ken Seals, has been improving all year long, and they uh, have a chance to uh, tie that ball game up at Mississippi State. I uh, just couldn't quite get the job done. Um, I like them here uh, as an underdog on the road uh, to muddy the game up and uh, keep it closer than that 17-point spread. Uh, give me the Commodores to cover on the road at Commonwealth Stadium. Um, Middle Tennessee uh, on the road at Marshall. Thundering Herd is laying 24 points at home. Um, 
you know, middle started off the year uh, really bad, and they have uh, gotten a little bit better uh, when I started playing some uh, some weaker competition. Uh, Marshall um, offensively and uh, and defensive line wise, uh, probably the best team that middle I uh, played all year long. Um, I would lay this 24 points with them there. I, I think that you can name the score. Uh, we are um, playing this game. It's November 14th. Uh, they, might, they know what November 14th means at Marshall. November 14th, 1970, plane crash. Killed the whole football team, except for the guys that stayed home. Uh, coaching staff, except for a couple. And um, y'all know the story. Um, this is 40th anniversary of that. 40th anniversary. You think that's not going to play into this game? Give me Thunder and Herd. They'll cover that spread all day long. Middle is terrible anyway. And um, let's just add a little bit more fuel to the fire. Miami on the road at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech laying two at home uh, against the number nine ranked Miami Hurricanes. And now this is a one, a spot that... A lot of people are confused by. Um, let me just tell you, I mean, I, I'm not. Uh, Virginia Tech uh, is coming off of a home loss to Liberty, which, I mean, I, I, I got to think people are making a little bit more of that than what it really is. Liberty is a really good football team. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, not playing up at your best, you know, I, I you, you can catch an L with them. You catch an L there. Miami, their defense, the defense is not good. On the road last week uh, against NC State, they were lucky to be able to come back and win that ball game. Uh, they didn't cover. Um, you know, I just think they got a lot of holes on the defensive side of the ball. Virginia Tech, uh, I feel like, can uh, really expose them running the ball there. They probably got the best rushing attack in the ACC. And just some food for thought. When a ranked team this year is taking on an unranked team and the ranked team is uh, a dog, they're 4-16-2 against the number. 4-16-2. So, take Virginia Tech in the spot. Take the Hokies. Coastal Carolina on the road at Troy. Troy uh, is catching 11 at home against Coastal Carolina, ranked number 15 in the country. It's a Cinderella story. Um, yeah, now their coach, uh, that, that's, that's the next hot name um, that I, I've got my Gamecock fans clamoring for. My, my Gamecock brethren are clamoring for Jamie Chadwell and his staff. Um, this guy uh, got... Uh, Charleston Southern's program almost buried uh, cheating. Uh, I don't. I, I just. I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Not proven enough uh, at this level. Uh, seeing how losing record last year. Yeah, that, I mean they're they're playing. They're really good this year, uh, no doubt. I mean they are. The stars are coming to alignment. This is a really good team. But I just. I. I, I need to see a bigger body of work. Um, you know, a, a month ago people were talking about the guy at UNC Charlotte. Uh, they call him Dabo Jr. or something. Dabo Sweeney's like his hero. Uh, Will Healy is his name. And that that name hasn't even come up uh, this week when everybody's talking. Everybody's talking about Hugh Freeze and Jamie Chadwell. I don't think any of those guys are going to end up being the next head coach. Uh, I do have an idea who uh, I think it's going to be, but I'm not going to uh, say anything right now uh, for fear of uh, rebuttal and looking dumb. But uh, anyway, uh, Troy, uh, uh, normally a pretty tough team, especially at home. Uh, Coast, I just don't see Coastal going through this year undefeated. I don't see them going through this year undefeated. And they've been covering numbers, covering numbers, covering numbers. Uh, I'm going to take Troy in the spot. I'm going to keep, uh, keep laying the points against Coastal Carolina until uh, they finally don't cover it anymore. It's bound to happen, right? No, take Troy. Army on the road at Tulane. Tulane is a four-point home uh, favorite against Army. Uh, Tulane's losses uh, to Houston, SMU, and UCF 
Uh, and they've picked up wins in the past couple of weeks against Temple uh, and East Carolina. So the schedule softened up a little bit. Um, so they've been tested, been tested already and played some decent teams. Army is 6-1 and one right now. You wouldn't know it. Uh, their one loss is to Cincinnati, so obviously that's not a bad loss at all. But they, they have played such a soft schedule, the likes of Mercer, uh, Abilene Christian, Middle Tennessee, uh, UL Monroe. They've dominated all these teams, uh, but they really haven't, uh, haven't faced a, uh, uh, a potent offense. I uh, like two lanes with some, you know, really talented, skilled people, and you know, bigger than bigger offensive linemen, bigger, uh, bigger uh, defensive uh, linemen, faster secondary, and that type of stuff. Um, and you know, Army and, and is known for pulling off upsets, but this year's Army team, things just a little bit different. And, and you know, I would feel better about them if they had been able to uh, to play those games, like the game against Air Force, uh, that would have been a good matchup see what they really had, if they've been able to play the game against BYU, uh, but they haven't. So I'm going to take the green wave in this spot. I think I cover that short number at home. Uh, Wake Forest on the road at North Carolina. North Carolina is uh, laying 13 at home against Wake Forest. This is, you know, this is a funny spot. North Carolina has been kind of a, uh, a Jekyll and Hyde team all year long. You know, you've lost to Florida State. Uh, you lost on the road at Virginia, um, but I mean, you last week I picked them to not cover the spread against Duke, and they just absolutely destroyed uh, their rival, uh, the Duke Blue Devils, and uh, they destroyed their rival NC State. It was like they've really been up for their rival games. Wake Forest is a rival game. UNC got a lot of rivals there in the little, little uh, triangle. Uh, tobacco Road, uh, whatever you want to call it there, in area of North Carolina. So uh, knowing, knowing that, uh, 13 points, I think UNC is the better team here, and I'm going to take North Carolina to cover that 13. Hope I'm right. Uh, I'm putting a little bit of faith in them this time. I didn't, uh, didn't have faith in them last week, uh, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully good things. Uh, Indiana. Right, number 10 in the country uh, on the road at Michigan State. And Michigan State's catching seven points at home. I think that uh, a lot of people are just having problems coming to grips with the fact that Indiana's a really good football team. Uh, disciplined, you know, they play well. Uh, quarterback, Michael Penix Jr., uh, really talented. On the road, Michigan State's horrible. Uh, so that being said, taking the Hoosiers on the road, cover that seven points and take care of business against, uh, old Sparty, um, who have, uh, and head coach, uh, Mel Tucker. And that was, a, that was a move that to, to me, just, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, man, been a head coach for one year. I don't understand that. Why are you going to go from Colorado to, uh, Lant East Lansing, Michigan. Money, I guess. I don't know. It's really, really a uh, odd one there. Uh, Penn State on the road at Nebraska. Nebraska catching three at home against Penn State. Uh, this is just a, a weird spot. Both these teams are uh, are winless. Penn State zero and three. Nebraska zero and two. Um, the short number at home, uh, I, you know, I just, I, I got to look at this and I'll look at the way that both these teams played against Ohio State. Okay, that's a common opponent. And I, you know, I was more impressed with the way Penn State played against Ohio State than I was in Nebraska. Um, you did just, you know, uh, Penn State was still in the ball game. Uh, until later on uh, in the fourth quarter when uh, Ohio State was trying to able to put them away. And Ohio State actually had to play hard to uh, to put Penn State uh, out of their misery, so to speak, and um, get that win in uh, Happy Valley. Uh, so for me, I, I think Penn State overall is a more talented team. Um, somebody's got to uh, shake out of this funk, and I think Penn State – covers on the road 
and uh, gets this win here uh, against Nebraska and Lincoln. Uh, Illinois on the road at Rutgers. Uh, Illinois is uh, really bad. This is one of the worst uh, offenses in the country. Uh, last week, you know, they, they, they last week out Purdue. Um, they lost, lost 31 24. That game ended up being a push. Um, but uh, they scored a couple of touchdowns late. I mean, that game was really uh, not that close. Uh, Rutgers has impressed everybody uh, this year. Um, you know, covered the number a couple of times, covered against Ohio State. Never quit. They never quit in that game. They pulled every uh, trick out of the book. Uh, there were some damn reverse reverse passes, some you know, flea flickers. Uh, they ran everything except the freaking oop de oop. Uh, <laughs> try to score uh, against Ohio State. Uh, so for me, I, I'm going to go with the team that just looks like they're they're playing harder, uh, they're trying harder. Greg Schiano got this thing going in the right direction. And um, when's the last time Rutgers has ever been favored in a Big Ten game? Have they? It's been a long time. Uh, Georgia State Panthers uh, going on the road, taking on App State. Georgia State head coach Sean Elliott uh, returning to his alma mater. Uh, and App State and the Mountain Rears are uh, laying 16 in uh, Kid Brewer Stadium against the Panthers. Uh, this is really just going to be a, a matchup. Who's going to be able to stop? Who's running game? Because uh, that's what they do. Both these teams are really good at running the ball. Statistically, if you want to look at it, Georgia State's run defense better than App State's run defense. I just think App State's a more talented team. This is a home game for them. Uh, Georgia State, I just got to look back at, at how they performed a couple of weeks ago against um, Coastal Carolina. Was that just an anomaly? Or was it not? I don't know. They won last week. They they come back and they put over fifty points on the board last week, and they and they got the win um, after getting shut out the week before. So they're really Jekyll and Hyde too. Um, I just think App State just a better team, and um, sixteen points though. They really haven't been uh, haven't been as dominant this year as uh, what they have been in the past. Hmm, this is a funny one for me. The funny one. I'm gonna take Georgia State to cover this road number. I, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna put it out there and uh, and take the the Panthers to cover on the road against uh, App State. I think Sean Elliott will really pull all the tricks out of the book there. I think this is a game that he really wants, and um, I think this team's gonna play well. I don't think they'll necessarily win, but I do like them to cover. Uh, on the road at App State, five and one Mountaineers. Yep, that's what they are. Uh, give me Georgia State. Uh, Louisville on the road at Virginia. Virginia laying three and the hook at home against Louisville. Louisville's been playing a little bit better uh, of late. Um, you know, had a, a fairly close game with Virginia Tech. Um, was it last week? Uh, ended up dropping that one 42-35. Uh, scored a touchdown late, and a uh, week before that, I mean, they totally just destroyed Florida State at home. Uh, more on them later. Um, this Virginia team uh, coming in, they're two and four. Uh, I think they're better uh, than what their record suggests. Um, for me, I, I just I think that Virginia, right at this point in time, has a bigger upside uh, than what Louisville does. I think we can uh, expect to uh, see the Cavaliers cover that three and a half at home. They normally play pretty well at home, and uh, Mendenhall will get them coached up. For this game, uh, look for Virginia to cover the three and a half uh, against Louisville. Louisville's defense is uh, not very good, not very good at all. South Florida, uh, the Bulls, uh, on the road at Houston, laying 14. Um, you know, South Florida's been improving, too. Uh, they've, they, they've actually, uh, you know, they were, uh, they got shut out earlier in the season at Notre Dame, and then um, 
couple games after that, you know, they, uh, you know, only managed to put up seven points against Cincinnati, which, you know, really good, the best defense they played all year long. Uh, but they actually did cover the number there against Cincinnati. Um, you know, all these losses, uh, they've put some points on the board, the exception of which is Tulsa, only 13 points uh, at home in the 42-13 uh, loss to Tulsa. Last week, uh, they should have beaten Memphis. They should have beaten Memphis. There's no way in the world that Memphis should have came back and won that game, uh, but they did. Uh, ended up 34-33. Uh, the Memphis Tigers come back and win uh, against uh, South Florida, but I, I think there's not a lot of quit in this team, the South Florida bunch. I think they're going to continue to improve, continue to work, and getting better. Uh, Houston, um, not as good of a team as Memphis uh, to me. Uh, they uh, just totally got dominated uh, last week against Cincinnati. I could see them coming out uh, not playing their best here at home against South Florida. So give me the Bulls. Uh, I think the Bulls cover this 14 on the road. I still like Houston to win the game straight up, but uh, look for the Bulls there to cover. Uh, Notre Dame on the road at Boston College. Boston College is catching 13 and the hook at home. Uh, Notre Dame is coming in ranked. What well, I didn't even write it down. What are they ranked now? Are they number two in the country or number three? They are number two right now. It's a lofty ranking for the Irish. How long has it been since they've been ranked number two? It's It's been a long time. I'm not sure. I guess, um, I guess they were ranked number two when they went and played that uh, that national B championship game. What was that? Was that the last uh, BCS national championship game when they played uh, Alabama in 2013? Um, probably was. I guess they were ranked number two when they went into that one. But um, this is a game here. This is a, a classic spot where. Somebody will come out flat. You know, Notre Dame knocked off number one team in the country last week in the Taters. Um, and then Boston College, a team which uh, is it's looking to play spoiler. Looking to play spoiler. And it's the perfect spot to do it. And it's against a team that they have traditionally played pretty well against. These games have traditionally been pretty close. 27 years ago, Notre Dame had just knocked off number one Florida State. They lose to Boston College. The next week, um, Chestnut Hill, uh, everybody's jumping on Boston College in this one, and normally that's not a good sign, but for me, it is. I like the underdog here to cover. I think this game will be uh, a good one, and as I've said before, Notre Dame is known for not playing their best at some particular point in the season every year against a mid-level ACC team. It happens every year. Now, it just so happens they are actually in the ACC this year. Uh, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean that they still can't do it, that they still can't have that. They had one uh, a few weeks ago against Louisville, same kind of spot, 12-7 um, win at home uh, against a team that they were favored, I think, by like 17 or so. So... I'll take Boston College here to cover. I think Notre Dame will win the game, but I think this win will be close. And it wouldn't shock me. It would not shock me to see Boston College pull upset here. wouldn't shock me at all to see another undefeated team go down. Colorado on the road at Stanford. Uh, Stanford is uh, laying seven and a half at home. Uh, got some lingering coronavirus issues. Uh, they're coming off of a 35-14 loss to um, Oregon. Uh, Colorado uh, coming off a win uh, against UCLA in their opener. Uh, I like the underdog here. Uh, Stanford, I mean, they you know don't really know who the quarterback is going to be in this game. Got a lot of COVID stuff going on there. Give me the Colorado Buffaloes to cover the seven and a half point spread there. I think this is a really tight ball game. Northwestern uh, on the road at Purdue. Purdue is catching two at home. Um, yeah, Northwestern last week, there's no reason why they should have won that game against Nebraska. Nebraska was inside the red zone a ton. 
uh, against Northwestern and uh, just could not punch the ball in. Um, now, Northwestern, a really, really good team defensively. Uh, Purdue, I, I think I think pretty uh, much uh, a given that we're not going to see Rondell Moore this year for whatever reason. Nobody really knows what's up with that. Um, but I like the... I like the home underdog in this spot. Like the home dog. I think it's barking. Talking about Purdue. Give me the boilers to cover the two. Uh, Arkansas on the road at number five, Florida. Florida's laying 17 at home. Um, once again, here we go. Uh, another classic spot where a team could come out flat. Florida. They've done what they've had to do to win the SEC East uh, this year. They're not going to uh, really seriously be challenged this year, I don't think, uh, the rest of the season. Uh, they've got um, they got Arkansas, I know, Vanderbilt, uh, Tennessee, and uh, -bum -bum, LSU. You know, not, not very good teams uh, that they've got remaining on that schedule. And right here, uh, we see former Florida quarterback, Felipe Franks, going to be coming back into the swamp. Uh, Arkansas, just a team that just it, it, it just has just a new energy this year, a new energy behind head coach Sam Pittman. Uh, I was skeptical about this one at, back in the uh, summer, too, or during the offseason. I mean, what is this guy? He's never been a head coach. And, and, and but he's doing it. He's doing it. He's 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 given the uh, reins to his coordinators, uh, Barry Odom, defensive coordinator, doing a, an, an admirable job, ad, blah, 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 admirable job uh, there, uh, turning that defense around. Uh, Kendall Bryles is there, puts points on the board uh, offensively with a team that's probably really not that talented, um, but they are uh, they're, they're giving some folks fits. And they're winning some games finally in the SEC. They won what three games? I think it is. After it helped, they hadn't won an SEC game since 2017. Um, and this would be the classic spot for Florida to come out flat uh, and not really play that well. But be kind of you know indifferent here in the spot. I, I like the Razorbacks. I like the Razorbacks to cover that 17. I think that's too much. Moving right along to. Uh, the last page of our docket for the week. Uh, Florida State at North Carolina State. Uh, NC State is laying 10 points at home. Uh, if you want to give me, if you want me to give you a pick that is my lock, stock, and two smoking barrels of the week, this is it. NC State, take NC State and the 10. Florida State uh, is facing right now uh, quarter, uh, quarterback uh, Blackman uh, has transferred out. He's, he's gone, uh, transferring out uh, at the end of the semester, which will be any time. Uh, their backup quarterback, what's his name, uh, Jordan Travis, uh, he got hurt in the last game. He's questionable for this one. Uh, so they could potentially be playing with the third string uh, quarterback, younger brother of... Uh, what is it, uh, Brock Purdy, his younger brother, uh, who is a decent player, I think, in his own right, but he just d doesn't have a lot of reps this year. And um, Marvin Wilson, the defensive tackle, has uh, undergone, uh, just, it says, an undisclosed surgery. His season's over with. He was a potential All-American type player. And to Marion Terry, the dynamic wide receiver, he's just quit the team. He's just gone. Done. No longer with the program. Don't know what happened there. Uh, I'm sure the Seminole backers and insiders may have more info than me on that. But with those guys out, there's no way. They're not covering the spread. This is going to be a blowout. And it could have probably been a blowout even with them in there. I mean, Florida State is just not very good. Uh, I mean, they and, – and look – uh, like, I mean, they'll just look like they've kind of just quit. It's kind of given up, about like Gamecocks have uh, here lately. So I'm taking uh, NC State in this one to cover. Uh, speaking of locks of the week, I'm not going to call it a lock of the week, but um, it may be pretty daggum close in this next one. 
Gamecocks on the road at Ole Miss. Ole Miss is laying 11 points at home. Uh, we know what Ole Miss's uh, offense can do. We know they will throw the ball around. Uh, quarterback Matt Corral, looking at stats, 18 uh, touchdown passes on the year. Strong nine picks, so he's going to uh, he's going to make some mistakes. Uh, South Carolina, our quarterback, Colin Hill, five touchdown passes this year. Wow, that's impressive uh, to go along with that. Five interceptions, just terrible numbers, uh, terrible numbers. And everybody says, well, you know, all the issues on offense aren't all its fault. Yeah, well, you know what? They're also, they also are his fault. <laughs> they are. Uh, Coach Muschamp said there's been an open quarterback competition all week long. Uh, it's Thursday, but we still haven't named a starter. You know, we're fixing to travel to Ole Miss. It's just, he's just a joke. He, he's he's horrible. The team's quit on him, in my opinion. Just by looking at him Saturday night, they quit. Uh, that was that was just a – I know Texas A&M was a better team. I, I get that. I understand that. But Las Vegas said they were 10 points better than us, not 45. You know, I mean, it just – it is what it is. It looked like they quit to me there towards the end of the first half. Uh, so, for me, uh, Ole Miss – and a lot of people don't think about this, about them. Uh, they run the ball especially well, too, with the uh, running back, Ely. Uh, is a really good player. Uh, they can put some pressure on the quarterback, too. Um, so, you know, in this spot, we're on the road. We're coming off of a horrible performance. Uh, I, and I just don't see any way that the Gamecocks cover this number. I'm not laying any points with them until they prove to me otherwise. So give me Ole Miss here uh, to cover that 11-point spread. Now, if you watch our Rob Comrade and Kale Show podcast that I participate in on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, you'll notice last night I did pick my South Carolina Gamecocks to cover the spread against Ole Miss. And in our contest, it was seven because we go with the opening line. That tells you... Uh, how bad we are, and how the per public perceives us. But that line shifted four points from the time that it opened on Sunday afternoon uh, up until till right now. So we go with the opening lines. But in that contest, just keep in mind, if you watch that and say, well, why is he making a different pick here than what he made? That making sense. Really? Well, the contest, there's quite a bit of money at stake there. And, and right now I'm behind by about eight games. So I've got to make up some ground on the, the, uh, the leaders in that contest. And you will see me in some of these go out on a limb and pick kind of against the grain with the rest of those people on there with what I think that they're going to pick. Um, so I picked the Gamecocks there. You know, on the chance that we cover that seven points, boom, I'm going to get a game up on a lot of people there. So that's why I do some of that stuff. And you'll see that it doesn't exactly uh, always mesh 100% with what we got going on over here. Um, but, but yeah, Ole Miss is going to win that ball game, and they'll win by three scores, I have no doubt. I, our team is they're, – they're horrible. They're horrible, and I have um, – I'll say it for, for you guys right here. So, yeah, only the people who are watching the picks against the spread will, uh, will get it. But um, – if Will Muschamp returns to coach the team in 2021, uh, I'm done. I'm done. I, I will not support South Carolina football in the year 2021 if he is the head coach. Right now, I'm, I'm saying it here. It's November the 12th, 2020. Okay? So I'm a man of my word. I will not support them in the year 2021 if he is the head football coach. I will not. I, I am that done with it. I'm that done with it. Uh, he, he is he is horrible. He is a, a shithole and uh, should not be allowed to coach another football game. A blundering idiot. Okay. <laughs> we got all those pleasantries out of the way. Let's finish up these picks. Wisconsin on the road at Michigan. Michigan is laying four or catching four in the hook at home against Wisconsin. You know, we really don't know a lot about Wisconsin other than what we saw week one. And what I saw week one was a dominant football team. Michigan has had some problems um, the past couple of weeks. They were dominated by Indiana last week. Um, 
lost at home two weeks ago to Sparty. Uh, Wisconsin, you know, if Graham Mertz is hitting here at quarterback, this will be a no-brainer. I still think it's a no-brainer anyway. I think Wisconsin is just a better team. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, I think, circling the drain up there at Michigan, too. Uh, no, we don't want him for a football coach here either, so anybody that's suggesting that, uh-uh, no. <laughs> but I'm going to take the Badgers here, and hopefully this one gets played. You know, they've had some COVID issues and uh, – and stuff. So hopefully they're able to uh, to field that one and play that game. They've already uh, canceled two games, I believe, Wisconsin, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, they've they've got some ground to make up, uh, but still a really good football team. That can't get on the field. That's bad. The bad thing. Oregon State at Washington. Washington is uh, laying 13 and the hook at home against Oregon State. Normally. Um, these teams that are playing their first game, which Washington is, their game last week got canceled, right? Um, are covering. But, but that's not always the rule. Oregon State last week played pretty well in the second half of that game against Washington State. Uh, I had taken the Beave uh, to cover uh, the spread in that game, and the Beave didn't do it. They didn't quite get the job done. But um, they're pretty good. Uh, you know, quarterback-wise, they're pretty good. They got a running back named Jamar Jefferson, who uh, was – he was a 1,000-yard rusher almost his freshman year. Numbers kind of regressed a little bit last year. But he went for over 100 yards last week against Washington State. And uh, this time taking on another uh, team from the uh, Apple State – and, you know, that slow start, I think that Oregon State's gotten over that. And they had made a lot of improvements last year. Had gotten a lot better under head coach Jonathan Smith. This will be the coaching debut for Jimmy Lake, uh, new head coach at Washington after Chris Peterson just kind of kind of went away. Um, but I'm going to call for the Beavers. Call for the Beav to uh, cover the spread here. Keep this game close. I think they continue uh, improving. Uh, and it wouldn't shock me. There either to see them uh, see them pull an upset. Finally, we have Utah. The Utes uh, head to the highway, travel down to Pasadena to take on the UCLA Bruins. UCLA is catching two and the hook at home against Utah. Of course, Utah's game last week uh, against Arizona got canceled. Uh, I'm kind of interested in this one. Uh, see if uh, you know, former South Carolina. Quarterback Jake Bentley, who transferred out to Utah, see if he uh, you know, can do anything positive for uh, the Utes. I hope the guy goes out there and has a uh, has a great season. I really do. Um, UCLA quarterback Dorian Thompson Robinson, he accounted for like 400 yards of total offense last week, uh, and there it's like a 48-44, I believe the score was. I may be wrong on that. It was 40 something to 40 something. They lost to Colorado um, this week. You got to think: Are they going to be spent? Are they going to be give out? Uh, I like the home underdog here. I do. I, I, I like to see. I like UCLA to possibly spring this upset in this uh, this situation. Utah is replacing a ton of players. Uh, okay, or, you know, running back, uh, quarterback, offensive line wise. You know, from a team that uh, you know kind of got molly whopped a little bit in the uh, Pac-12 championship game last year, and they ended up uh, ended up in a bowl, right, against Texas, where they uh, they got smoked. But uh, you know, at one time, they were uh, – there was talk that they would make the college football playoff. Then they kind of fell apart there. But uh, Tyler Huntley was his name. Zach Moss was the running back. All those guys are gone. Uh, so they're going to have to find their way a little bit there. Uh, UCLA's got one week where they're battle-tested, and I think the Bruins may pull the upset here. So I'm going to take them to cover uh, in the Rose Bowl uh, against those Utah Utes making their uh, 2020 debut. All right, guys, that is uh, the end of the picks against the spread. 23 games in the books. Uh, tune back in first of next week or possibly Sunday if I can get it up quick enough and uh, see how I did. If you enjoyed this video, please, please hit it with a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. Maybe you've got your own opinion on some certain picks, or maybe you have an uh, opinion on a game that I didn't do here. There were a few uh, Pac-12 games and, you know, a couple in the Big Ten and stuff like that that I uh, 
didn't put on here. You know, I can't do all of them. That would uh, take a little bit too long. So um, that's that. But like I said, uh, hit it with a thumbs up and subscribe to the Carolina Jackpot channel if you are not subscribed already. Uh, we do this every week. And uh, some weeks we do pretty damn good at it. Some weeks we don't, but we always have fun. All right, guys, I will see y'all later. I appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out. Go Gamecocks. Fire Will Muschamp, please.